Cristiano Ronaldo Injury Scare Al Nasser Boss Offers Update on Legendary Forward In a recent AFC Champions League fixture, Cristiano Ronaldo faced a concerning neck issue that forced him to exit the game prematurely. Despite his departure in the 78th minute, Al Nasser secured their spot in the next round with another low. Draw against Persepolis, clinching the top spot in Group A. Al Nasser head coach Luis Castro addressed Ronaldo's injury, expressing optimism about his readiness for the upcoming matches. Castro stated, The medical team is studying the injury and will do everything to make sure he is ready for the next game. During the game against Persepolis, Ronaldo's impact extended beyond his performance on the field. The 38-year-old, a five-time Ballon d'Or winner, displayed sportsmanship by advising the match referee to reverse a penalty decision that had been awarded to him. He clarified that he had not been fouled and insisted on canceling the spot kick. Looking ahead, Al Nasser is set to return to Saudi Pro League action against Al Hilal on Friday. Ronaldo, who has netted 24 goals in 25 appearances this season, remains hopeful that he will recover in time to contribute significantly to the crucial title-chasing encounter. The legendary forward's presence is pivotal for Al Nasser as they aim for success in both domestic and continental competitions. Gavi's season-ending injury in Spain manager Luis de la Fuente's response Spain's national team manager Luis de la Fuente has distanced himself from responsibility for Gavi's season-ending injury sustained during La Roja's Euro 2024 qualifying game against Georgia on November 19th. Gavi, a talented midfielder, suffered a severe ACL rupture in his right knee, sidelining him for at least nine months. Asterisk communication gap with Barcelona. De La Fuente clarified that Barcelona did not inform him about any concerns regarding Gavi's participation in the crucial match. Emphasizing a commitment to prioritize players' health, he revealed plans to substitute Gavi at halftime to manage his playing time responsibly. Manager's Stance on Player Health In a statement on the El Larguero podcast, De La Fuente expressed his non-interference in club matters and asserted a focus on the national team's welfare. He mentioned that Gavi's eagerness to play and train after previous matches exemplified the player's dedication. Asterisk details of the incident. The manager explained that Gavi reported no issues at halftime, and doctors detected no immediate instability in the knee. Had there been clear signs of injury, swift action would have been taken. De La Fuente defended the seriousness of the qualifying match, emphasizing the team's commitment to representing their country. Asterisk response to Xavi's comments. Addressing statements from Barcelona manager Xavi, De La Fuente mentioned their conversation, where Xavi expressed no animosity towards him. The incident was deemed an unfortunate accident, inherent to the risks of professional football. Gavi's future and support. Gavi, a former Golden Boy Award winner, faces a prolonged absence from the sport, potentially missing Euro 2024. The football community, including Real Madrid president Florentino Perez, has rallied behind him, offering words of encouragement. Asterisk conclusion. Asterisk. While the circumstances surrounding Gavi's injury are unfortunate, De La Fuente has asserted the absence of negligence on his part, emphasizing a commitment to player well-being. The incident underscores the inherent risks in football and the challenges of balancing club and national team priorities. In recent developments, Bruno Fernandes, Manchester United's captain, finds himself under the critical lens of former Red Devils midfielder Paul Ince. This scrutiny comes in the wake of Roy Keane's earlier condemnation of Fernandes for allowing Marcus Rashford to take a penalty in their recent 3 anseal victory against Everton. Ince, a former United skipper with two Premier League titles to his name, expressed doubt about Fernandez's captaincy, particularly focusing on his on-field demeanor. Speaking on TalkSport, Ince remarked, I don't know what I see in Fernandez. Is he a leader by the way he plays? At the moment, he's not playing to the best of his ability. Yes, he scored the winner against Fulham. But as far as being a leader, you do it by organization. 
The criticism delves into Fernandez's apparent lack of influence on the team when he is not performing at his peak. Ince highlighted a key aspect of captaincy, the ability to lift the team even when personal performance falters. According to Insa, Fernandez tends to focus on himself, evident in his body language and arguments with referees when things don't go well. Fernandez assumed the role of United's captain unofficially last season, stepping in when Harry Maguire faced a decline in favor. However, despite being officially named captain this season, Fernandez has faced consistent criticism for his attitude, especially during challenging moments like the 7 0 defeat to Liverpool last season and United's shaky start in the current campaign. The upcoming challenges for Fernandez include a crucial Champions League clash against Galatasaray, where United will be looking for him to rise to the occasion and silence his critics. Following this, attention will turn to a pivotal Premier League encounter with Newcastle on December 2nd. Whether Fernandez can address these concerns and prove his mettle as a captain remains to be seen. Juan Roman Riquelme, the former Argentina international and Boca Juniors legend, has provided insights into the ongoing debate over the greatest footballer of all time, GOAT. Having had the privilege of playing alongside both Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi, Riquelme finds it challenging to make a definitive choice between the two iconic figures. Riquelme's journey began at Boca Juniors, where he shared the pitch with the legendary Diego Maradona. Maradona, the 1986 World Cup winner, left an indelible mark on Riquelme during his formative years, influencing his perception of football greatness. As Riquelme progressed in his career, he found himself alongside another football genius, Lionel Messi. The eight-time Ballon d'Or winner showcased his prodigious talent during his early years with the national team, leaving a lasting impression on Riquelme. Despite being in the exclusive club of players who played alongside both Maradona and Messi, Riquelme refrains from definitively labeling one as the ultimate GOAT. In a statement to ESPN, he expressed the difficulty in choosing between them. Maradona, he's the greatest I saw on a football pitch when I was a child. Now, when I grew up, the greatest is Messi. I was lucky to play with both of them. For me, it was a very big dream. Maradona's impact on the global stage, marked by the iconic Hand of God goal and extraordinary individual performances, left an everlasting impression on football enthusiasts. Meanwhile, Messi replicated the feat by guiding Argentina to World Cup glory in Qatar 2022, solidifying his place in football history. At the age of 36, Lionel Messi continues to dazzle on the football pitch. Not only has he rewritten history with 180 international caps and 106 goals, but he also graces Major League Soccer, MLS, with his presence, playing for Inter Miami. Messi's future involvement in the 2026 World Cup remains uncertain, adding an element of suspense to his illustrious career. Conclusion Juan Roman Riquelme's unique perspective as a player who shared the field with both Maradona and Messi provides valuable insights into the ongoing debate over the footballing GOAT. His reluctance to choose between the two emphasizes the distinct qualities that make each player exceptional, leaving football fans to appreciate the greatness of both Messi and Maradona in their own ways.